name is Johannes Hedinger. I'm an artist, curator, educator, researcher based in Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, I'm a director of the Institute for Land and Environmental Art here in Switzerland. And I run there a Biennale and an international art school. I also teach. Um, I work since a couple of years as a curator, since 25 years as an artist, mostly in a duo called Common Com. And um, I also write. That's the last book. Uh, we just edited Landscape One. Maybe we can also talk a little bit about that today. So, but now I'm really curious and um, looking forward to see who who's on our table. So maybe we start uh, with uh, Harsha. You have to, uh, you, your microphone is not on. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi. I am Harsha. I'm based in Southern India. I'm a sculptor by practice and uh, I also experiment with performance art. My recent project is a one acre permaculture farm where I'm trying to achieve self sustainability through food production, through local food systems, valuing local food systems that are already there. So my studio is in the farm and I'm trying to live here for the last uh, six months now. So kind of really looking at uh, ecology and art and as a lifestyle rather than a uh, practice rather than anything else. Yeah, I've exhibited uh, uh, in Australia in Sculpture by the Sea and uh, I've also uh, did a paper on Buddhist sculpture with the British Museum in 2014. So my interest varies from uh, art that is uh, from this context of, of Deccan Plateau in India and also contemporary uh, uh, sculpture. Okay, thanks. So next uh, in line on my screen is a uh, Tsering. Ah, hi, Lena. You just missed uh, the start of the um, introduction, but uh, we are moving now to the introduction of Tsering, and and later it's your turn. Okay. So yeah. maybe. Thank you. Hello. Hello. All. Um... I am uh, Tsering Mutup. Uh, I'm I'm practicing artist based in Ladakh. Uh, I've uh, completed my master's from Shiv Nadar University, and I currently work with an NGO called Ladakh Arts and Media Organization as an arts officer. So uh, right now we conduct uh, many projects around uh, COVID-19 and things like that. So yeah, uh, that's a brief bio about me. And uh, currently, I am showing my exhibition in Taiwan and Korea as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi. So next would Hi. be Ashim and then Lina. Hi, I'm Asim. Uh, I'm Asim, an installation sorry. artist uh, based in Delhi. Um, I'm trying to work uh, uh, with vernacular technologies as well as new technologies. Um, trying to make uh, interactive environments in immersive uh, spaces. And last but not least. Yeah, hi, I'm Lena Vincent and I'm an art historian and curator based in Goa. I do have a working association with Artport Making Waves and Anne Murray Melster, who is also one of the presenters in this program. And uh, I continue to work within the areas of research, education, and public art programming. And that's what I'm doing currently as well. Really interesting. So um, we have basically 40 minutes now and the table um, has this title, uh, Can Environmental Art Reconnect Us to History, Culture, and Ecology of Landscape? So, so landscape as something which is uh, not nature, obviously, so it's a, a cultural landscape. So I, basically, I would say everything uh, where we go on this planet is uh, <clears throat> somehow meant, shaped or made, or it's not completely nature 
untouched anymore, uh, especially when we work there. So, so we produce something, so we can call, call it art or culture or whatever. Um, so this landscape, my question I put in this room or on, on this table is, so can we, with our artistic practice, or let's make it bigger, like creativity, um, can we reconnect um, through that, through our artistic or curatory practice um, to the land, to the landscape, through our culture background, through um, the history of that place, or in the end, then also these uh, questions of ecology, what we are um, addressing in this conference. So, well, I have a bit experience on that field, but I'm really curious to hear about all your um, practices. And maybe we can also then start to not compare, but we, maybe we, we, we find some over layers or, or, or similarity even between the Asian part or the European part, or we see uh, how it's completely different like. So um, I, I don't know if you uh, kind of um, saw my projects. If yes, then we don't have to dive in too much in that at that point. So then it's also interesting to hear a little bit from each other uh, on that field, on, on their, uh, your practice on this field. So who, who'd like to start and give a sneak peek? Well, um, not, not exactly a sneak peek, but I thought as, as a means of, you know, bringing in our, um, our very current experience, I think, in, in India, where uh, we are having farmers' protests currently going on. We have, I think, farmers walking in large numbers uh, in North India because of these particular policies that have been brought about by the uh, government. And uh, I was, in fact, reminded of not something that I have worked with directly, but of the Gram Art Project, which I think some of you might be knowing about. Uh, it's a project in Nagpur, Nagpur state in India, and they worked uh, very much with the land uh, bringing about. Can you share sorry? a link or something? Uh, if you're online, can you share a link or a picture? So, um, yeah, can yeah, yeah. I should be able to do that. And um, so, uh, you know, uh, the Gram Art Project, in fact, they worked quite a bit on the, uh, uh, what do you call it? on trying to bring about a change in the people's, um, oh, wait, I got this. You just post it in the chat or so. Then we can... Yeah, I will do that. And um, they wanted to change people's perceptions and responses towards their own local uh, resources particularly in terms of seeds, in terms of what women are doing. So this was, this is some, this is a project that I uh, actually find very interesting. And uh, recently I just, you know, I, I will show you this box that came in, which is a, a sort of Diwali box, you know, and uh, we have, uh, we have in India, this idea of, uh, you know, sweets. Uh, these wonderful sweets that are distributed during any festival. And these are seeds, actually. So they are seeds packed in these sweet boxes, uh, sweets. And so, you know, for me, as of today, when I was watching this news of the farmers walking and of understanding this idea of an artistic engagement with space and the notion of building something that is that becomes part of the community or part of a larger group of people. I sort of thought of that and that's why I have it with me now. And uh, that's something that I wanted to share. And of course, here for myself in, in this region of Goa, I have been working with the Goenchimati movement, which is, uh, which is working towards uh, 
uh, identifying the sources of uh, corruption in the mining companies and also trying to resolve uh, quite a number of problems, environmental problems that have arisen out of, uh, you know, unmitigated mining in Goa. So that, with that, it continues a work with artists, designers, people who are, you know, from different fields coming together to not only protest, but build communication material and work very locally. So, you know, really changing the way in which we ourselves look, look at our surroundings. So that's a little bit about what, what I uh, am thinking of at this moment. So, you know, I'm putting it out there and leave it to someone else. Mm -hmm. And you would, oh. add, uh, you, you would answer the question, can we, with a yes? I would say yes. It's a process. Mm -hmm. It's a process, but it's in process, and it's a yes. We can, and and uh, it's very positive. Yes. Thank you for sharing. Does somebody ask? I, just I wanted to talk. Yeah. 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 So for me, this this land has a context, right? I uh, somebody who's been living in the city in Hyderabad, and I moved like 20, 35, 20, 30 kilometers away from the city now. So I'm in the context of a village. And for in the village, art has a different meaning altogether. So something that is non-purposeful itself is a question mark. So in a gallery setting, in a wide cube gallery, what we call as art, what we assume as, as this important object becomes nullified in a village setting. For here, I really like the idea that we can challenge uh, what is art, kind of using the analogies of food and ritual, because ritual is very key in, in, in any, like even in a tribal uh, setting or in an Aboriginal setting. And I think as, as primates, as humans, we, we relish that aspect. So I think ritual and objects based on ritual in the context of ecology would work uh, in the future uh, the prospects of art making. Because uh, when I practice, let's say, a project that we recently did uh, was looking at the idea of digging. So this is a project that we did in uh, collaboration with uh, Gotej Enstrom. Is the idea of just digging, like four artists in four different uh, spectrums of, of this one country, just digging and looking at uh, what treasures we could find, what minerals we could find, and what is this act of digging, you know? So just this one act of uh, really probing in, in kind of... Uh, the only source that we uh, that we get all these energy from, right? Uh, be it food, be it uh, culture, be it minerals, energy, all energy forms, right? And uh, our relationship with this kind of uh, uh, with with soil is is uh, completely scientific. But why can it not be much more than that? You know, why can it? I think that's something that we have to really explore. Like uh, looking at uh, mycelium as a source of uh, form making, you know. Uh, why should it always be fiberglass or uh, all these materials that we think are uh, going to last? But mushroom itself is an inert material. Once it forms, it can uh, last forever, you know. Why can that not be used in art, art making, you know? I think these are questions. Uh, it's also the onus is on the, uh, the curators, the artists, the buyers to make it sustainable for artists to practice uh, in, in a form like this. I think these are questions to be uh, asked to each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just one, somebody wants to hop in. Otherwise I can add something to that. Yes. Um, yeah, I just like to add something on to the uh, same question. Although I don't want to put a unqualified statement as I'm not from a very ecological side. And I'm not expert <laughs> into that side, but rather my, uh, my work talks about the land politics, my work talks about identity, my work talks about um, student migration and things. So uh, along that lines, I mean, I also touched upon certain issues like land politics and uh, so on and so forth. I mean, uh, when, when your question, the, uh, the thematic question of can environmental art reconnect us with the history, culture and ecology, 
reminded me of one particular uh, uh, public art. Um, I mean, I don't know whether to call it an art project or anything, but then, uh, you know, it sort of serves the idea of the society in which I would like to quote uh, Sona Mangchuk, who has created this idea of uh, ice stupa, I don't know, which became very viral. And, you know, uh, people uh, tend to look at uh, what it is about. So the before that, I, I would like to just bring into the uh, context of what from where the ice tupa came into exist. Um, there used to be a guy called who who happened to see this ice melting slowly uh, into the shade side, and then he thought of you know uh, slowing the time of uh, uh, a freezing of an ice within the village because. Um, the water would flow much more before uh, the agricultural time so that then the uh, farmers wouldn't get um, uh, water on time. So then he sort of, you know, uh, uh, he, he sort of uh, tried to reduce the time by bringing the water towards the shade side so that it remains, it lasts for a longer time. And then Sonomongchuk uh, also, I think, uh, somewhere appropriated that idea and he built this idea of uh, stupa, the he made this uh, giant uh, uh, stupa like a structure with an ice which he would bring which he would channel the water from the stream and or from the mountain and bring it to the side into the shade and then you know he, he his ideal idea was to bring make lots of stupa so that that water in summer you know can be used for uh, fields uh, so that idea uh, was uh, very phenomenal to me because uh, as a, whether you want to call it an art project or uh, anything, but that serves, that, that project, that environmental art uh, work in itself uh, serves the idea of, uh, you know, changing the environment. I, I just wanted to bring that forth. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you to Harsha. He just put a, a link so in the in the chat. So. So that we can have Thank a look. Roger. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, maybe to add uh, the, the statement of Harsha, which also moved, as I understood, outside from the urban or, from, um, or city uh, to the land and, and try to start doing artistic projects there. So this was a similar starting point when we started five years ago with the ILEA. Uh, first, it was just uh, the art school, the, the, the summer school and the Biennale. And now we have a third leg, which do long-term research and we call it the Institute of Land and Environmental Art. Uh, yeah, we, we all come from a, oh, we are a small group, but we are come from a classical art, urban art um, context. And uh, we went to a really remote place. Um, it's about 30 kilometers long, the valley, three four villages, 100 inhabitants each, and there's much more uh, cows and sheep and, uh, than human beings there, and a lot of mountains, rough nature, uh, beautiful nature. And we thought uh, and this could be a ground to start working and also um, uh, making educational projects for people coming from outside, but also in the next step to uh, to start connecting and working and learning from each other from the from the locals there. And so after five years, I can say uh, we are on a good track with that. So a lot of projects now working uh, with their knowledge. It's also knowledge transfer on both ways. So it's not only the art guys who come in drop a sculpture and then they go. Sometimes there are no sculpture or no physical or hardly physical objects. So it's, it's sometimes uh, process research-based projects. Um, this year uh, with the COVID situation, it was anything special and the topic was, <clears throat> we used the topic before the COVID, but uh, it was analog digital. So it made uh, totally sense. So we had some digital pieces in the, physical landscape. Um, uh, what what I want to say? No, no, but uh, uh, this 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 connection and this collaboration, participation, also with the the non-art people from uh, from there, mostly farmers, uh, is really enriching all the projects and 
yeah, it makes it much more sustainable, yes, and, and long term and, 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 and sensible, yes. And it's basically, it started with the, the original idea of the early land art um, movements from the 60s and 70s, where you go out out of the system, out um, in the desert, mostly then uh, with the Americans, and you go there uh, and you work with what you find there. Uh, nowadays, uh, you find much more there because underneath you have so much power lines and, and energy fields and you have, uh, you have the satellites above you and you have the, the pipes and the tunnels below you. We also working with those. So it's not just dirt work what we do there, but uh, the idea is to bring uh, artists and, and creative people and also thinkers and scholars out uh, and to work in the field with the field and also with what's there. So the people, the context, the culture and uh, Oh, we, we, we have works who are works who deal with the, with the, the power, um, the water power systems there, or with the satellites above us. So it's not just uh, we have field works and you see it in the grass. So sometimes uh, you have to go to, a, to the archive of the municipality and you work with the, the, the dead people or whatever. So. Um, I can share also some links later, or maybe you already uh, browsed through the, the websites and to, to see all the, the different kinds of works. Uh, I, I could talk ages, but uh, um, yeah, I'm really interested uh, also to hear your projects now. So I, I stop, stop now and maybe we can be reconnected later after this only for 30 minutes and, and, and continue our talks and also our networks because we are still building this up now also for the next year and uh, maybe we can um, invite you over or at some point. Yeah. Um, maybe ask uh, Yes? I just, uh, before, before I say, I just wanted to say that a couple of things that you said, and of course, what Harsha said also about, uh, about understanding the idea, I think, of, of uh, rituals and culture in a particular place. And what you said about uh, a non-patronizing uh, attitude to begin with, and, uh, uh, and also, uh, you know, to, uh, to be multidisciplinary. I think that these are focal points that that really bring more results rather than the top down approach and following only one stream so that's yes. all it's a comment yes that's that's really important to us also so we do uh, also some some projects which from the first sight doesn't look like art so we do. Um, we started to make a, a big uh, oral history archive where we just do interviewing all the elder people in the in the villages, and they had they have such an, an, a knowledge about the land, about uh, the history there, about uh, how they connect through uh, with their landscape. So we, we it's just a, a, a huge storage of. Uh, also of wisdom and knowledge, which will be lost soon. So that's why we record them. And uh, at some later point, maybe an artist or scholar will work with this material and uh, it's, um, it's for the future, yes. Sorry. Yeah, so I mean, um, the artistic practice for me at least uh, uh, does provide uh, interesting uh, ways of approaching uh, certain issues uh, which uh, traditional sort of specialized uh, fields um, are not able to do I think like uh, I think if you look at environmental arts uh, environmental sciences or uh, uh, look at geology or geography um, there is a bit too much specialization in terms of uh, what people are trying to say or research in. So in that sense, I think artistic practice has an interesting uh, space because uh, it can involve um, experts from different fields 
and also it doesn't necessarily have to prove anything or doesn't necessarily have to be uh, productive in the sort of commercial sense uh, but at the same time i think uh, artistic practice can only actually give a gesture to point a person or a viewer towards a certain thought process when we look at the uh, landscape what i find most difficult today is actually that people normal people um, are not connected to their immediate environment they don't seem to have any association with things around them so uh, and i think a large part of that has to do with how we educate ourselves um in school systems because all our knowledge has now become more and more theoretical so <clears throat> in a biology class one might learn about flowers and petals and you know stamens and stuff but we rarely do the students who are learning about flowers rarely do they actually have an understanding of the flowers that are growing around in their school or around their houses so i think um, it is a much uh, larger systemic problem where actually the education system is sort of designed to make us uh, less self sufficient less mm. connected with our environment uh, less um, uh, sensitive to things around us so um, i think we need a like a revolutionary change in many things uh, especially the teaching and learning process to actually really try and connect back with landscape environment even uh, social connections you know does that make sense yeah to, i agree to it completely that makes absolute sense because education and in this in the context of land or in the context of where we are living uh, in the context of nature actually um is actually a perfect combination for the future because otherwise every information is uh, social media driven or or internet driven and uh, any of these can be manipulated uh, to the advantage of a capitalist society and uh, only people can realize they can be self sufficient if they understand these things uh, in situ in the land that they living in or in the space that they living in because that gives them complete confidence as to what they're uh, understanding they like really getting tactile feedback because otherwise everything is so virtual uh, that they, they can believe anything that uh, seems authentic um, you know mm-hmm. yeah I, i think it's also i think it predates this digital and virtual uh, sort of a debate uh, which is there because uh, uh, i mean many places but i mean i can get a few examples but there is a lot of places where school education or college education has been sort of propagated as a means of sort of having a life which is less hardy you will have a nice desk job or something you know that sort of a promise success and yeah success and the success is uh, uh, sort of evaluated only in certain silos not uh, in other aspects so then what has happened in many parts of india at least is that people go through schools and perhaps even college but there are not enough uh, meaningful jobs for them but at the same time because they have gone through this education system they are not uh, willing to engage with environment in the same way that their elder generations were uh, doing so and, and again um, like you were talking about hoanas about uh, uh, knowledge being lost that is like a fast accelerating process right now where knowledge that is accumulated over many generations over hundreds of years of trial and error and more often than not that knowledge is a uh, very contextual um, it's it's about it's very associated with that uh, geology with that topography with that climate uh, and also the socio economic uh, situation uh, that knowledge um, is fast evaporating and we are getting more and more theoretical knowledge uh, or, you know i mean we have so many people doing phd's about such random things and uh, the phd research actually for me has very very little value to ask me so instead um, research could be done in so many other ways i think but you know so i mean it, it is my criticism of the sort of formal academic 
institutional education model that we have all over the world now. I just uh, placed some links because I got an alert that we only have eight minutes left, <laughs> and then uh, is the question around the oh, uh, But uh, uh, I placed some links for you later uh, about the initiatives in the mountains, and I I just uh, introduced two things, and then later um, Asha can talk again. Um, with that project in the mountains, we go there and you stay there and we try to dive deeper. And the other project I, I proposed or I, I showed you in, the, in my introduction video is the block project, which uh, brings something local and goes around and try to connect and communicate through, through a tree trunk uh, and uh, through the, the history and the custom where it's originated from uh, and to make kind of a conversation it's talking to each other uh, when we travel to the, to the other countries or, or, or even continents. So it's like a, a talking stick, a global talking stick with a communication device. And uh, we just don't, uh, we don't have to dive into that, but uh, just to, if the COVID someday <laughs> is over, uh, we plan to come to India with these projects. And at that some point, at that point, my, uh, I might, um, uh, connect you again and maybe we can uh, contribute them in a later state next year or even later uh, with that project. But uh, uh, I saw a hand of Harsha, so you want to say or add something else? Um, I, was, I was thinking uh, about this idea of how do we make land, uh, like say public art sustainable, you know, and then this idea was, and then I, I found this um, online platform which is called land art generator uh, they've been uh, accepting applications the kind of a platform that kind of takes ideas from artists architects um, where when you create a large public art how is it viable uh, and especially in a developing country like ours when uh, when you propose a public art they say where is the budget uh, coming from and then how are you going to uh, you know in, in a city in, in a developing nation like ours how is art uh, a priority for them it is not actually because we have infrastructure that is really needed uh, by the larger public. So in that case, how uh, it could be a direction for us to look at sustainable energy systems like solar, wind, thermal energy systems to create art um, that can not just generate energy for itself, but also to the, to the nearest uh, public institutions or, or to the public landscape. You know? That could be a viable way for us to kind of look at uh, the future of uh, public art, especially in, in a context of uh, developing nations. And I think it's even more true for the developed nations as well, because uh, the steel, the armature in a public art project is insane. Like the foundations, the ballast systems uh, to make sure it, it lasts longer in, a, in a, a public scenario, because I've seen that personally. And then I understand how much uh, carbon footprint each sculpture has in a public uh, art uh, situation, right? So I think uh, I'm just, uh, yeah, curious. Uh, in, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Sam, uh, in fact, I wanted to sort of draw attention to your uh, bamboo, you know, your work with bamboo and the Pandal project. I don't know if we have a couple of minutes for you to we just have five share minutes. a little about it. We have five because minutes. That was, that was very interesting. Yes. Well, I think there are two projects I will briefly mention. Uh, one is a 20 year project I'm doing in Bangladesh. Uh, we are about, we are in the fifth year right now. Uh, the idea is to grow a landscape um, and manipulate it as it's growing. So it's like a constantly growing, changing uh, uh, sort of a landscape, about two acres of it. And uh, that also has a lake and we also have fish and we're trying to also encourage certain flora, certain fauna, you know, that's one. The other is what Lena is talking about, which was a commission from a resident association in Calcutta. Um, and uh, in Calcutta, there is this phenomenon called Durga Puja, which is an annual religious festival that happens. But over the years, it has uh, now uh, transformed from a 
sort of uh, traditional puja, uh, traditional prayer ritual into a very experimental form um quite often it tends towards spectacle uh, more than content um but i was fortunate enough to have a client who uh, gave me a lot of freedom so i i worked on uh, i worked with bamboo and cane and robotics so trying to look at how uh, vernacular technology and really new experimental technology can work in tandem uh, help each other support each other I, because i mean in one thing uh, that i have been working on a lot i think there's a lot of polarization either you are new school or you are you know traditional either you are left wing or right wing and now the space is such uh, politically as well as uh, i don't know ideologically also that it's tough uh, to discuss things meaningfully with somebody you disagree with you know it's almost as if if you disagree with somebody you just need to shun that person or not talk about it or not deal with it so i am actually in- interested in uh, engaging with things that i disagree with or i don't completely understand so it was a very fruitful project for me yeah that sounds super interesting and uh um, over the last 10 minutes i i i thought yeah we 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 need more time and uh, i would suggest that at some point later we should meet again the five of us over yeah and uh, i have all your contacts and i i will make a group and then we make it happen later so because i think they in 3 minutes they they cut us but uh, um. we have one last thing who wants to share bring in lena tevin i think it would be really good to connect again because like you said it's a this is just an introduction uh it's it's just like saying hello and i think that these engagements need to be deeper and sure. probably need to have more dialogue and it gives also an opportunity to uh to share more so i think that of course we're together on the email already and i think that definitely we should uh, sort of keep in touch and perhaps build towards some sort of collaboration that can ultimately happen or make it a sharing of different sorts of knowledge that becomes useful to us in in our different spaces so no that, that that that's great and and we can also um say a thank you to the organizers to bring us together so we would our i probably would never met you at that point of uh, my life and uh, it's it's proof of concept that this this table um experimental place what they also had to do because of the covid over us it would would have been a, a normal or regular uh, conference uh, had to come up with and uh, we can say it worked already now and we will see what happens now in the second and the third rounds um and i'm looking really forward to reconnect with you later at some point and i like to thank you for your contributions and thank you hope to see you soon <laughs> bye bye so uh, should we end here thank and uh... um is that is this now the moderator yes i'm the moderator this is the mod yeah <laughs> uh yeah so i'm going to end uh, i mean if the participants could all sort of leave there is a larger uh, panel discussion that's following this if you would like to join that with all of today's speakers and you guys if you want to have the links you probably have to copy it out of the chat now i i can make a copy as well and and send you the copy yeah. but uh, once yes, we close please. this window it's 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 over yes i make a copy there yeah that will be wonderful thanks everyone and uh, shaira to join the other one uh okay. did did you get the um the link should be in your email actually or i sh- should i just watch it on the website uh hang on i can just send it to you here as well i'll put it on the chat oh
Asim, it was nice to see you again. Harsha, great to meet you and Sering and yeah. Johannes. Is it yeah. Johannes? Johannes. Johannes, you're welcome to bring it to my farm, uh, your project. Yes, please. Um, as soon as, uh, currently it's in lockdown in Chile and uh, and we have to find a way uh, money-wise and also uh, uh, transport-wise to bring it over, but uh, we're working on that. But uh, it won't be before next year anyway, so, so we, have, we have time. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm looking Great. forward. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, to the moderator, so I stay in this room, correct? Uh, yes. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the link for the... <laughs> Uh, Lina, can I WhatsApp it to you? Yes, yes, please. Uh, okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, okay I'll right. leave yeah. now. Yeah. Thanks a ton. And I, I, f I forgot your name, dear uh, moderator. What's your, your name? Uh, Shaira. 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 Um, Shaira. And did some question came in or do I have to improvise? Yes, yeah, so I have three questions for you. Um, the first one is, uh, would you consider farmers as land artists? Mm -hmm. uh, the second question is, I mean... Uh, your thing written or so that I can have a look at it later again, or you you just uh, read it to me loud now. Uh, I have them written down as well. I can put them in the chat if you like. Yeah, please. Then yeah. So the first is uh, as I could uh, consider farmer as maybe also sort of land artist. Yes. Would you consider farmers as land artists? Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of part of your Q&A for now, so yeah. uh, if you could also respond to these three questions now. Oh, how can we, what's the word? Gauge. Ah, uh, gauge. Engage. Um, the last question, do you think cities or urban spaces are unsustainable land art or for land art or as land art? I suppose as land art. Yes, that would be the correct way to put it. Okay. Uh, and do you, you don't know over, uh, from which corner or uh, background those questions came? Uh, they're yeah. actually from uh, the story of itself i mean we've put together these questions okay yeah okay so and i have now uh 15 minutes time to talk about these three questions yes three question or two or yeah okay so uh let me think about um maybe i share the screen and then we can have a, a look at one or two projects where, where I think we can exemplarily talk about that. Um, yes. Uh, I'm online, yes? Yes, you are online. And do you see now a screen? Yes. So we are now on the website of Artsafintal, which is part of the Institute for Land of Environmental Art. As I said before, they, we have three legs. So we have the, the Artsafintal, which is the Biennale. We have the, the Academy, which is the educational part. And we have also the Institute, which has uh, just a starting page. Um, and that's the the sound, um, the oral history archive I was talking about. So if you if you want to listen to farmers or 
to artists or, or to the institute. Um, back to the question one, would you consider farmers as land artists? Well, obviously from their background, they're farmers and they're not artists. But once we bring in artists or creative people and also thinkers and start collaborating with them, somehow they became uh, become partners, of course, uh, really important partners. Without them, it's not possible. And in that way, they are co-creator, for sure. And I try to pick maybe two or three works uh, in the field where we included or where we collaborated with um, those farmers and locals. So maybe I go in the last year exhibition artworks. Do you see the website? Yes. Okay. So for example, we have... Um, Uh, let's go to this project, maybe. Um, we we had a group from, let's go to the English page. It's just German here. Anyway, uh, we, we had this group from um, London. They just digged uh, um, a square feet. I go to the photos once to see it better, uh, the collection here. So we, it's it's basically uh, a hole like that, two by two by two meters. The Dick Collective um, digged that out. Uh, why it's not working, yes. And uh, it was a collaboration with the, the local guys there and without them, it wouldn't have been possible. So everybody was uh, helping digging out this two by two by two minimal uh, hole, and the 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 earth from inside went to this to this room, which is an old cheesery. And in the end, now it became um, a hospice. But uh, you see the the hole from the top. So it was a meeting place in the village. Some um, oh, let me see. some performances also happen in here, like that one, like a concert. And this is the, the local farmer who owned the land. It's actually his land and he participated in that. And, and in the end, we don't see that on this uh, photo stream, um, all the village helped to close it again. So so now it's closed again. And it's it's an it's actually an an opportunity to think of landscape of um, what can happen in this hole, what can happen with this material inside there. So people started to interact there. It was really participatory and collaborative and in the end uh, it was gone. That's one thing. And the other one I wanted to show is maybe this one. And this one was a collaboration with a Inca, I don't know the English word, but the, the, the farmers who work with the bees who produce honey. Right. Uh, um, so this artist duo um, worked in this bassin, which is part of the uh, hydro power system and they they ask uh, one of the um, um, bee farmers to give them um, a population of bees and they brought it up to this bassin and what they basically did i tried to find more pictures uh, let me see here maybe uh, here um, you see it here it's a, it's a huge bassin and they, they place this, this this home for the bees, place the king um, a bee inside, and they produced actually honey there. And the, 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 the thing was, 
once the bees are in, they put two microphones uh, microphones inside the, the bee hut, and the sound of the bees went to the speakers here. And you had four speakers at four corners of this. It looks like a racetrack, and that was the, the idea, so that they want to produce the, the race sound or the, the, the bee sound for this um, architecture. And... Uh, yeah, when you hiked through there, you 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 heard kind of um, the bee sound, and they produce the honey. And without the former, it would also not be possible that they can produce uh, the project. In in that way, they were a collaborator. And let me see if there are other work which. Yeah, maybe this one is also interesting. Um, that's from this year. Uh, this artist, Melody Musse, she walked through the mountain, through a pipe, which own, is owned by the power station, who has all the lines under the, under the rocks. And uh, every five years, they have to empty the pipes. Uh, they are all full water, so they produce uh, hydropower. Um, they empty it and they um, check... Um, the condition of the pipes and during that um, um, phase she walked through the mountains through the pipe uh, and did this movie and it was kind of uh, also a performance and then she walked through the mountains seven kilometers in this part uh, without light and it became this movie and this kind of psychedelic uh, experience and the installation in the end was on one hand, a, a photography in front of the rock where inside the pipe is running. So it makes something visible. And the, the movie, which was shown just next to it in a, in a small church, uh, also shows what, what it, it looks like in this, in this pipe. So it, it was somehow was an educational part, um, a piece for for all the people who just see the, the beautiful landscape and they don't think of any infrastructure which is inside. And on the other hand, uh, it's also an art piece for itself, of course. So uh, this wouldn't have been also possible without, in this time, in this um, case, it, it's, it was not a, a farmer. It was, uh, it was uh, the power station uh, who, who was, um, Help, the helping hand and this uh, I, I, will, I also want to, to add that uh, it's not only the farmers who, who are helping for example like um, that one project uh, it, it's again so, so we work with the, with the hydro uh, power station who, who just emptied their lake which is a dam so that we can produce this raft on the ground of the lake and then float again the lake to rise it. So uh, it's all sort of different collaboration in this valley, not only the farmers, uh, we also work together with food producers, uh, with, um, with uh, children, for example, and of course with farmers, etc. Thank you for your help and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. Yes.